The Australian Sky News is having a field day lampooning none other than Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Seeing Trudeau try to lecture the world about fighting climate change despite clearly having no clue what he's talking about would be pure comedy gold if it wasn't also embarrassing for every Canadian that has to bear his corrupt leadership. In the video, Trudeau blatantly claims that climate change is not compatible with democracy as the Sky News host calls him bonkers for even suggesting authoritarianism to combat the liberal boogeyman of climate change. But Trudeau and his liberals seem to enjoy inviting criticism and laughter as Toronto officials float the bizarre idea of taxing rainwater. You can't make this stuff up. This is the Canada of today with everyone laughing at its dire state as the people in power look for more ways to steal money from you. This is Trudeau's Canada and Canadians have had enough. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. An Australian Sky News host reacted to the laughable Justin Trudeau in a highlight section on climate change insanity in first world countries. The Sky News host put on display for the world to see how little understanding and knowledge climate activists and politicians that claim to fight against climate change actually possess in regards to the issue with climate. It was quite embarrassing to watch the liberals claim that truckers, who are working in fields like logging, can easily replace their trucks with electric ones. Never mind the fact that logging in of itself should be something these corrupt climate activists are against in principle, but the lack of understanding in regards to how much power the truck would consume in hopes of becoming as efficient as it was when it ran on fuel is quite astonishing in a stupid kind of way. How are these people who are duller than a spoon just living with and around us with no repercussions? Well, if you want to answer to that, then you are out of luck, but if you are waiting to have your mind further blown at the sheer sight of climate stupidity, then hold on to your seats as the Australian Sky News host plays a video of Trudeau being his usual corrupt and malicious self, trying to further promote his infamous initiatives like the carbon tax. The video is of Justin Trudeau warning everyone about disinformation and manipulation from conservatives on the internet and in real life with politicians taking an undeserved stand, as he would like everyone to call it, against the climate mafia in Canada. Justin Trudeau is trying to frame the distrust in the government that greatly increased since the pandemic as nothing but a tool used against initiatives that will help Canada, whether Canadians ask for it or not. Trudeau is viewing this polarization from the typical and quite expected authoritarian lens that he denies any of the liberals, including him, possess or utilize. But his mask is ever so slipping right in front of everyone as he declares investing a huge sum of money to research how climate change interacts with democratic decline. It's a net zero sense. But just very quickly have a quick look at uh, the laughable Justin Trudeau talking how climate change and democracy don't seem to work together. Have a listen. We're all facing a series of challenges, new and old. We're still reeling from a pandemic that put immense pressure on our democracies. We're seeing growing distrust of government and media and increased polarization exacerbated by misinformation and disinformation. We're dealing with insecurity caused by armed conflicts and climate change. So today, I'm announcing that Canada is investing $8.4 million on research across the global south to better understand how climate change interacts with democratic decline. If this is not Trudeau coming to a realization that democracy won't help him nor his liberal cronies in their climate endeavors any further as he announces to the world, as blatantly as he possibly could, that he will take authoritarian steps to make sure his future of combating climate change is a reality without democracy getting in the way, then I don't know what could Trudeau possibly have done to make it more obvious than that. Except, of course, going on national news and just bluntly stating that he and the liberals will do as they see fit and no Canadian can say otherwise or disagree, but perhaps he is not so bluntly half-witted as this or maybe keen Canadians have already figured him out and realized what he wanted to say a long time ago. Alas, it is already too late for Canadians to avoid being embarrassed by Trudeau, as the Sky News hosts laugh at his earlier statement and indicate how all the words Trudeau and the Liberals like to use and just that. Words that are used to limit down your own freedom as it scares you from any meaningful choice you could have made. <laughs> That's too good. I mentioned a comedy show, How Climate Change James Interacts with Democratic Decline. These people are completely bonkers. Well, Rowan, 
Rowan, it's it's the same thing, you know, it's climate change, it's misinformation, it's disinformation, it's, you know, propaganda, it's all right, all of these sort of things, they come up with these bogeymen that wind up having one result. We have to make sure that you have free speech to say the things that are approved. We have democracy to vote for the approved candidates. It's all about narrowing freedom, narrowing your choices, Rowan and Rita. That's where this that, is all going. Well, that's the comedy hour. I tell you, Trudeau, it doesn't get any funnier than that. And they are completely right with Trudeau and the liberals using buzzword after buzzword like disinformation, polarization, misinformation, and climate change to create boogeymen that scare every unique and individual hardworking Canadian into following the liberal groupthink without second-guessing the liberals' beliefs or motives. A groupthink that has led us to become a laughing stock for the whole world to see. And if you think the circus is just about over then you are being ignorant to the liberals' true corrupt potential. Because down in Toronto they are seriously trying to find ways to implement a tax on rainwater. If heard that correctly, these government officials want to tax citizens for the rain that falls on their property now. As ludicrous as it sounds, it bears repeating that this is not a joke. The city has issued an official call for public consultation on what they are benignly referring to as a stormwater charge and water service charge. A language so bureaucratic and one day, but make no mistake, this is a rain tax they want to levy against Canadians. According to the city's announcement, the reason for this egregiously proposed rain tax is that stormwater runoff from properties is overburdening the sewer system and causing flooding and water pollution. They claim the hard surfaces like roofs, driveways, and patios contribute to stormwater runoff instead of absorption into the ground. So instead of the city upgrading its abysmal sewer and drainage system, which is so horrible that it seemingly floods when it rains just a little bit stronger, they are following the Trudeau textbook of holding everyday Canadians accountable and just taxing them for any governmental mistake. And these liberal freaks keep wondering why people have resorted to treating them like insane asylum patients. The method the city plans to use to calculate the rain tax is also dubious. They say they will use aerial photography to estimate the square footage of hard surface areas on properties like roofs and driveways. This crude estimation method seems intended to maximize revenue collection and optimize stealing from every Canadian's wallet rather than accurately measure stormwater impacts. Making matters worse is the city's lack of transparency about this proposed rain tax. It would simply appear as a separate line item on water bills without explicitly being labeled as a tax. How is this allowed exactly? This is clearly a deceptive tactic to obscure the true nature of the charge. As deceptive as timing the consultation on this tax in April of this year, when seasonal rainfall is low. It is a plan that is devised in order to minimize public attention towards the clown show and the expected subsequent backlash. Imposing a rain tax would expand government control while burdening citizens and businesses with yet another excessive tax. It would likely incentivize property owners to reduce green space and vegetation in misguided efforts to limit their tax liability. Additionally, a rain tax inserted as a line item on water bills would only obscure the true costs of government from taxpayers. This is what we get with a liberal circus running rampant with Trudeau on top. The world is laughing at our state and the people in charge are fixing to tax you for rain dropping on your property rather than ease the tax burden amid an affordability crisis. Worst of all, this might just be the tip of the iceberg. A new report from the Canadian Climate Institute reveals the carbon tax on consumers is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the true costs of Trudeau's daydreams of reducing emissions. In fact, the carbon tax accounts for only 8-14% to of projected greenhouse gas reductions by 2030 needed to meet the government's emissions target. The burden placed on major industries through carbon pricing and emissions regulations will be far greater, accounting for up to 75% of reductions. Indicating the government has downplayed the massive disruptions these policies will cause to the economy. Canadians are getting a sugar-coated version of carbon pricing while industries face an onslaught of new costs and red tape. Costs that are surely going to affect the day-to-day -day lives of Canadians and increase the affordability burden more than it already is. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Canadians will get rid of Trudeau and his gang of liberals before any more nonsense taxes are imposed? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.